Hello, friend. Welcome this morning. As we get into our day here, we want to start with some scripture. Today at 1 Samuel chapter 25, verses 25 and 26. I think you already know the setup. Uh, I'm not going to repeat it every morning. Nabal insulted David, treated him wrong. David's marching with 400 guys and sharp stuff. Abigail is intervening and trying to bring peace. So we'll pick it up at verse 25. This is David's response now to Abigail. This is the last part that Abigail says. Please let not my Lord regard this scoundrel Nabal. For as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, your maidservant, did not see the young men of my Lord whom you sent. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, since the Lord has held you back from coming to bloodshed and from avenging yourself with your own hand, now then let your enemies and those who seek harm for my Lord be as Nabal. So here again we see there's a lot of dysfunction here in this family. It sounds kind of like she's the one that runs things, and I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. Nabal is lounging around, being problematic. Uh, she's the one that runs things. The place where I get that hint from is where she says, But I, your maidservant, did not see the young men of my Lord whom you sent. So she wasn't in on that, but perhaps normally she would have been. But that's not the way it worked out that day. So... She, she was run, I, probably the one that ran things around there somewhat. But Nabal was still the, the person in charge, even though he was a messed up person. So she calls her own husband a scoundrel, the son of Belial. He is foolish. But she's appealing to David. David thinks that Nabal's a fool. The servant thinks that Nabal's a fool. Abigail thinks that Nabal's a fool. I don't know what Nabal thinks of himself. But he's got 400 guys with swords on his doorstep and didn't have to be that way. So yeah, I guess this guy qualifies as a fool. I think it's interesting here, another appeal that she makes. Very interesting. The Lord has held you back. You have not done this violence yet, and it hasn't happened yet, and I believe God is holding you back from doing it. That's a very spiritual appeal, and it's a very good point she makes. This hasn't, this hasn't, nobody's died yet, nobody's gotten sliced yet. Hey, this, we can save this for peace. And so that's a, to me, that's one of the interesting things that she really brings out. And if that's true, that God has held David back from shedding blood, how has he done it? Through Abigail. Abigail. Abigail is his messenger. Abigail here, no, she's not, not exactly a prophet. I'm not saying that. But Abigail, by doing the word of God, by, by acting out her faith, by trusting in God and doing everything she can to make peace that's legitimate, Abigail here is seeking out and God is using Abigail to hold back David's wrath because you know what? It's better that wrath not be expressed into the world normally. So here we have a precious indicator again of this sister who's seeking for peace. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, how many times have you held us back uh, through the activity, the words, the actions of another brother or sister held us back from doing something we shouldn't do. I don't know what the answer is, Lord, but I'm sure there are many occasions like that. Thank you for each brother. Thank you for each sister who is willing to be used of God and is walking closely enough to you that you can do that through them, that you can hold back, hold back our wrath and instead bring us the opportunity for peace. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. So let's try to be peacemakers, and if we're willing, God will do that as much as it's possible in us. We can live peaceably with all men. God be with you.